we're out in Nebraska in the cold of spring to see giant birds and a lot of them. A lot of them. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Burr, Steve, did you know that there's more than football and cornfields in Nebraska? No. <gasps> what else is there? You want to guess? We have birds and hills. There's hills in Nebraska, the sand hills. Oh, the sand hills. Yeah. So are we talking about sandhill cranes yes, right now? Yes, that's where we're going. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sandhill cranes. So here in North Platte, Nebraska, this is the North Platte River, I believe. There's North Platte and South Platte, but- Well, this is um, the North Platte. This is the North Platte River here in North Platte, Nebraska. And during this time of year, they counted 600,000 sandhill cranes migrate through and land on the Platte River at night to roost. And 80% of the world's sandhill cranes come here. Through here, yeah, on, the, on migrating north. On our bucket list for a really long time has been to come find sandhill cranes somewhere and we freaking found them. <laughs> I mm -hmm. have to say like, when we got back to the hotel at 10 o'clock last night, I, I, like, I was in tears, it was so great. It just, it was so much better, I guess, than I thought it would be. Yes. Oh, we have so much to tell you that I'm actually going to make a whole complete photography guide to seeing the sandhill cranes here, specifically with Dusty Trails uh, tour group that we went with. Fantastic, mm -hmm. super easy. Just get on the bus and they take you to private areas to see the sandhill cranes. They have exclusive access. Uh, there's only a couple places here, the sand, the crane trust. Mm -hmm. Crane Trust and Dusty Trails. Really, that's the only way you can see them if you want to see them on the river specifically. So we did all three tours. We did uh, uh, Sunrise. Sunrise, where they take off from the, the river. Yeah, but right just before dawn, and mm -hmm. you said that's kind of like the build-up. That, that, that's kind of the opening act, if you will. Yes. It, it's pretty amazing and pretty fast. It is, yeah, I was so. shocked. And you walk out to these private blinds in the complete dark. Although in the morning, we had half a moon. That was nice. You have to be completely quiet, so you have to know where every button is on your camera, everything in your bag, you have to know exactly where it is because it's completely dark. Yeah, no lights. And yes. they don't want you to use any lights because no light. they don't want to startle the cranes. Right. That's how close we are. They're so, it's so close. Yeah, exactly. So you have to turn your screen off. No phones. Just anything bright, anything loud. You have to be completely quiet. We don't want to disturb these birds. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. So that was like 5 in the 5.30 in the morning. You go out and do that. And then the afternoon tour, we got back on the bus at the visitor center with Dusty Trails and drove around uh, North Platte. 
Yeah, well, in the fields, in the cornfields. And that's where the cranes go to feed during the day. So there would be huge numbers of cranes dotting, well, not really dotting, flooding <laughs> cornfields. <laughs> And they gain 20% of their body fat during this time. It's really important for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. The, the bus tour, they know which fields to go see because we tried it on our own and we didn't find any. No, we found one. One, a one section of cranes, but they were so far off we couldn't even see them. So they know exactly where to go and what time. So the bus would just pull up to the side of the road. You'd roll, you'd pull down your windows, it's a school bus, and push your camera out the window. <laughs> it was so great. And these huge, huge fields, you could see them kettling, like kind of floating in and then sitting on the ground. And if you were super lucky, if you brought like really long binoculars, you could see them doing some of their dances. Yep. The it mating was pretty dance. cool. Yeah. yeah. Mating, defending. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All the Competing. different dances. So they'd show you those on the tour. Yep. Um, Get a little history of, of the cranes themselves and what, and what their behaviors are. Yeah, and that was really nice, I think. And you, they told you different things along the way as well. You kind of get almost a tour of North Platte <laughs> along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. and, the, and Dusty, who runs Dusty Trails, is very enthusiastic about all of this and has just information about everything you want to know. And then you call the evening tour. It's the crescendo, literally the crescendo. <laughs> it gets really, really loud when they start coming back into the river. So you do the same thing, like you get on the bus near sunset and drive back out to the same blinds that you do in the morning. And you're, you can be a little bit louder because there's no birds on the water yet. And oh, there's a crane flying over right now. I can hear it. Yep. Oh, anyway, uh, so you go back to the same blind, everyone gets settled in, and just before full dark. They start coming in. You hear them first again, because they're noisy critters. Thousands of them. Yep. And they land on the river in front of the blind. There's, it's like this actually, there's a long swash of these, um, like a meadow type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then the river, it's further than this, and then the river, and you just see them come in and grow. <gasps> A 
again, you have to be very, very quiet and very dark. Because once they're settled in, you don't want to spook them. Yeah. They and, land and in the river. If you get too noisy before they come in, they may not come in. They yeah. may go someplace else. Yeah. So. so there was some, I think your kids have to be 10 and over because that's, there was a couple 10 years old in there and they were having a hard time staying quiet. Um, so it's difficult because you have to stand in there in complete quiet and darkness for like an hour. Um, but I just, I couldn't believe it. Thousands of these cranes come in and to land and you could tens see of them. thousands tens of th and they're just like they walk along the river and they stand in the river all night to stay away from predators so they're not mm -hmm. on the bank they're not on the sandbars they're in the river in that particular place it's just perfect for them i just as, as far as photography we started off with our regular gear i have the a1 sony a1 steve's got the sony a7r4 and we started with our 200 to 600 lenses because the website said hey bring a long lens which is great on the daytime bus tour yep perfect for that because there's enough light but since these don't have a very wide aperture it was really really difficult to take pictures of the takeoff and the landing the other two tours because yeah the light is so restricted so dim oh my gosh yeah so i ended up switching to the 70 to 200 2.8 and what did you use i was using my 50 mil 1.4 yeah so and we didn't even bring these to the yeah. nighttime tour didn't even bring them uh, mm. <laughs> so we ended up using like all kinds of different gear along this trip for the different situations um so i'm, I'm excited to make that in-depth video because there's a lot you need to know about what to wear what to bring look at this weather it's cold and windy now it was 25 degrees a 25 mile an hour wind when we got here it was 70 degrees yesterday and now it's back down to chilly and breezy again and cloudy you just don't know what conditions you're going to get in the spring in nebraska so be prepared for everything there's a lot of things i want to tell you about photography in that full video but we wanted to give you like a sneak peek of the whole overall trip When I got off the bus last night and just, you know, felt like I was going to cry, like <laughs> I shook Dusty's hand. I said, this was a bucket list item for us. Thank you. And he says he gets people all the time that call and say, gosh, which tour would be the best? And he says, I, I can't help you choose. They're all so unique. And he's so right. Mm -hmm. You could conceivably, we didn't do this, but you could do all three tours in one day. Yes. Yeah, you could. You have to be at the visitor center between 5 and 5.30, depending on the time of year. And you do that tour and you're back by like 9. And then you get back on the bus between 10 and 2, depends on the day, for the daytime tour. And then you're back. And then you can have time for a break. And then you meet at the parking lot again around 7 p.m. I hear another one. Well, there they are. A couple, oh. Another couple, yeah. Oh, gosh. And the Canada geese, too. Um, then you can get back on the bus at 7 p.m. and do the nighttime and be back at your hotel by 10. You could do all that in one day. We didn't. Mm -hmm. We broke it up in two days and actually added it another tour. Oh my gosh, you want to subscribe <laughs> and turn on the bell because we're going to have a video coming up probably next of chickens chickens prairie, prairie chickens, chickens. They're, they're look, mating dances and stuff if we look weirdly excited 
It was so good. It was so good. I can't decide whether I like the chickens or the cranes better, honestly. But I can't, I can't express in words what that was like to see the prairie chicken tour. So you're gonna just have to wait till the next video for that. You'll, if you're a bird enthusiast at all, another private tour on a private location. Yes. We couldn't have found it by ourselves. So uh, same for this, like you cannot go to the river and just see these birds out there in the morning and evening. You can't, that's all private land. Um, so just mm -hmm. huge, huge props to Dusty, Dusty Trails for the tours that we went on. It yep. was phenomenal, just phenomenal. Highly recommend, 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna so. get cranes, especially if you come third or fourth week of May, uh, March, right in the middle of the migration. It's incredible. It's incredible, like just standing here recording this, I don't know if you could hear the cranes flying over, but they're here. Gosh, I don't, I don't even really know what to say. Stay tuned for the next video. Stay tuned yeah. for the next video, yes. <laughs> and obviously we're gonna show you some of our photos and videos. In that video, we're gonna go over like how and why I chose and Steve chose to take those two particular pictures with that lens, what we were doing. It's just gonna be more in depth. So if you're planning a, a Sand Hill crane trip for next year, you'll want to watch this or even mm -hmm. if, if I get this video out soon enough, even a little bit this year, it's only a four hour drive to here from Denver. So really not bad. Yep. Yeah. Which we got to take that drive back now, unfortunately. Uh, so this, that was our trip to see the Sandhill Cranes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just, oh, it was, it was great. It was so great. Now I'm cold. So let's get some coffee. Okay. Coffee. Yeah. Hit the like button. Yes, please. Let us know. So. Yes. This is uh, one of our beyond adventures. We always talk about our photography, wildlife and nature photography in Colorado and beyond, and this is beyond. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we gotta go. Okay, bye. bye.